Good Monday morning, everybody. It is week eight of 2021, February 22nd, right? It feels like that. I don't remember. It's the 22nd. So, good morning. It's very early for me. Uh, Grammar trucks have not been by, so they're most likely going to be running by while I'm filming. So, my coffee is strong today, you guys. Anyways, how was everybody's week last week? I hope it was really fantastic. Mine was really fast. Did anybody else's week go really, really fast? I'm not complaining because it was really rainy. So I think it's supposed to be really raining again this week. It's supposed to be a little bit warmer now, so I'm not gonna complain too, too much. So let's talk about last week. My goal last week was to walk at my Target fat burn mode. Um, did I, I don't even remember if I talked about this last week. <sighs> it went so fast. So anyways, I have like my Apple watch and so I, Instead of monitoring how long, like that focus, um, how long and everything like that, with calories burned, I don't even look at that. I look at the target burn mode. If you do enough Google search, I guess I didn't mention it, you can find a chart. But there's like a mathematical equation, I think. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I, I found a chart. Mine is between 126 and 128, or 129. So if you're 38, just go with that. <laughs> I mean, cheater, cheater, pumpkinator. Um, so I did do that. I, I walked every day this week. Uh, I walked multiple lengths of time. Uh, some days you only walked three miles. Some days, actually twice, I think, I walked like j just a smidgen over five miles, like 5.1. But anyways, so I walked three to five miles every day this week. I feel really good about it. I don't want to keep doing it because it actually really makes me happy. I I did something to my back and it hurt so bad. Like the my sciatic nerve came back, and flared up, and my leg was numb, and I was in pain, and I got my tendon out, know, and I was just crabby about it. I still walked very slowly, but I still walked. But I, and I I still got up to target burn mode. Walking, see, there's the truck. Walking it really does help uh, with my sciatic nerve. Uh, damage it just does it, it takes a minute for me to get moving but I do get moving and then I feel so much better after what did I do you say I was snacking I was snacking on sugar and I'm gonna tell you this right now I swear I'm a crazy person when it comes to this if you are my friend in real life you're you already know this about me I swear food affects me like that once I cut back on processed foods. Um, my sciatic nerve damage, or nerve pain anyways, wasn't as frequent or as, as often. And once I really cut out the snacking, like it goes away. Like it's, it, it's a thing of the past. Actually, it's a thing of the never. There's no residual anything. Good timing. Uh, yeah, anyways, so I got into the snacks. I got into the sugary snacks, specifically coconut frosting. <laughs> My weakness, coconut, cream cheese, frosting. I home make it, so it's still plant-based, and then I excuse it that way. And that's so wrong. It's something I am trying to do. So, is that it, everything? Well, that's the other recap. Um, re I wanted to read this. I'm like 20 pages from finishing. I was just, I was done with the book last night. <laughs> okay, I, I read fast this book isn't I mean there's a good chunk of what is left here is like uh, editor notes and like everything like that I really should have finished this way in like two days but um yeah <laughs> the last two books I just read took me probably a month to read each because they were like 500 pages and they were very very scientific sciencey I'm not I'm not complaining. I can read the sciencey stuff, but it's just it, I have to read slower so that way I indulge the information. Um, this was not really sciencey, and the sciencey parts in here, it was lab rats. I'm not a rat. <clears throat> I have problems with that. Uh, in, inter interesting information. I mean, it may be for new to the what the food industry really does to your foods. I mean, it's all it's all if it comes from a factory, it's it's chemical. It's not even food. Um, he talks a lot about that. He talks a lot about um, advertising and 
like restaurant stuff, like most of the book was about restaurant stuff and the tips and tricks on how to stop overeating was basically like a blog post. It was a couple chapters. Actually, I think you could narrow it down to a blog post. So I was kind of frustrated with it, to be very honest. And it was like chapter or er, section four. We went in the back of the book. Um, anyways, it, not a bad read, but for me, I've read so much that I really just wanted the, the guts of overeating. And this is, I mean, eight personal opinions, mostly, which would be helpful. I was really disappointed in that book for myself. Now, if you are not aware of what the food industry does to lure you in to eat more food and how they alter fat, sugar, and salt to taste like a Dorito because the Dorito is not a Dorito, it's it's made to melt in your mouth and it's made to ping your salt, it's made to ping your sugar, and it's made to ping your fat so that you eat more. And that's why you, why you eat more because your body doesn't have to chew. Um, so there's if there's nothing there to chew, there's nothing there to tell your brain to keep um, producing like the all the chemicals and the hormones because you still have food coming and you to chew a Dorito just a couple times whereas you chew a carrot like 10 times that because there's more there to chew. So it doesn't melt in your mouth. Anyways, uh, that was not in this book. That was in, well, I mean, I guess the last book, um, How Not to Diet, uh, I'll have a, a link down to Amazon in case you're curious about it, uh, down in the comments. He talks a lot about brain chemistry and what you eat, uh, how it affects how much you eat. Uh, that's That was more interesting. I don't know, you guys. I was really, really hoping. I'm still going to explore overeating and I already found another book and I'm gonna order it on Amazon. We'll, we'll see how that one goes. Uh, but for me, this, this is basically a hard pass. I mean, there was a section down here, like way in the back of the book here where he finally starts giving you actual tips and tricks on how to stop doing things. And one of them is talking down the urge. Now that is one thing that I do have a problem. That's what I really wanted. Like I really wanted the sciencey stuff, you guys, out of this book. I wanted the sciencey stuff, the, the, the psychology, the therapist, the help me get over this or help me with tips and tricks. And literally there's like, there's bullets listed. Like I said, this could have been a blog post. Um, as far as the, the, the end of overeating. No, the keep reading about how to end overeating. <laughs> that, that is helpful information, but like, give me the why, give me the how to get over that. Um, because he talks about his own personal experiences of how he's implementing the stuff and he's like, you know, one of his favorite things was like this restaurant or something in the airport. And he just walks a different way. Well, not all of us have a choice to go a different way <laughs> and not pass said trigger. Uh, and he also, uh, he also talked a lot about demonizing food basically. And like saying, you know, you have to say, no, this is a bad food. And well, I have a list of naughty foods. I call them naughty. No is too negative. I call them naughty foods. <laughs> but for me, like dairy is naughty. It starts with a rash on my chest, my tongue swells, and then I end up with two, four, I, literally it's 48 hours of GI upset from mouth to end. Like it's an unpleasant experience. So yes, for myself, dairy is a no. <laughs> that is a negative food for myself because it is wildly negative. Um, responses in my body like it, it, it's a no-go for me it's a absolutely no go it just is but i mean but when i and when i say naughty foods for myself it's like the vegan chocolates i mean are they horrible no do they satisfy a craving yes but i can't control that craving i can't control myself and i just end up eating a half a bag of chocolate chips which is not healthy it's not healthy it doesn't matter it's not healthy. And then psychologically it does some crap in my head and I don't like it. So that is my goal for searching help or end of or reading because I can't control myself. And, you know, I, I do. I have a bag of vegan chocolate chips and I did <laughs> eat half a bag of freaking chocolate chips. But, um, 
yeah I don't view that as a no food uh, I don't feel that I, feel that, I mean it, that's more of like a naughty food that's when I say naughty foods it's foods I can't control that's a naughty food for me but like yeah I, I do have a hard list now because I have like a GI system that kind of sucks and the unpleasantries for 48 hours is not great um gluten also also does that anything pro and it, like I can't I don't, I don't even want to say gluten. Wheat, wheat will do that to me uh, a lot of times. I will say <laughs> I know there's wheat and I know there's gluten in chapatas because my my neighbor friend makes chapatas sometimes and like they're the best thing I've ever had. <laughs> and mendazis, I can, I can eat her mendazis too. They're really, really good. But I also think because I, she home makes them and she makes them very traditional so they're not processed and I almost wonder if that's like okay in my system I don't know but those chapatas are really good like really good I oh, they're really good they're flaky and they're just yummy anyways <laughs> uh but typically wheat gluten uh does not fare well and it does mouth to end GI issues as well on the opposite spectrum it kind of feels like a barbed wire when I eat it so those foods are no for me but I will say I have healed my system enough to where, you know, if it's somebody's birthday and they're like, here, have a piece of cake, I'll eat the piece of cake. There's probably dairy, there's probably gluten in it, and I can suffer minor, like, upsets. Not like when I started this journey, I'm like, um, well, how do I want, I don't want to call it a detox. Elimination. Elimination diet to see what was triggering my episodes. Uh, and then when I found those, it was hell. I will say it that there is no other way it was horrid horrible anyways uh it's it's not that bad anymore i peeled a little bit i mean there's some upset and i might um, stay in bed close to the bathroom <laughs> but it's not that bad but it's it's not pleasant so i have been able to heal my body through that but and then the sugar the sugar didn't even taste good like and i was thinking about that this morning and i was like no i'm gonna admit i I had crap food this week um, and oh man it didn't even taste good <laughs> the chocolates didn't melt in my mouth but I kept eating them I kept going back for another one because I wanted that reward oh he did something that, that was really interesting he called it conditioned hyper eating I think is what he said conditioned hyper eating and yeah I can see that mm -hmm. especially like an emotional eater like me um, but yeah, when you're in a certain situation, you go for a uh, food or, I mean, if, if you're a smoker, you go for the cigarette, like been there, done that. Um, you know, drugs and alcohol do the same thing. It triggers the same thing. Uh, oh, what was that? Sugar. Look up sugar addiction because sugar affects the brain the same as like other like drugs and stuff. Like it, it's crazy. So yeah, I, I kept getting triggered. I kept going for like that dopamine, like sensation and I just never got it. It wasn't that pleasurable. I still ate half the bag. <laughs> there we are. I was really happy last week though. Um, we had a lot of fun times. It went really fast even though it was really rainy and we were kind of stuck in the house and everything like that. But yeah, you guys, I struggled this week. I had snacks. It wasn't that great. It, and even the coconut frosting that I made, like it just, like it wasn't there. It didn't do it for me, but I kept eating it. Yep, because I wanted, I wanted that memory, and it just, that memory never came back. So I almost wonder, because I just recently did the 30 days of uh, no sugar, no added sugar, I almost wonder if I've, like, cleansed enough of that out of my system to where now it just isn't, it wasn't there, it didn't do it for me. I don't know, it was really weird, and I've already been chug a lug to my coffee. Oh, coffee kicked in. But anyways. I struggled this week, but I learned something about myself. A couple of people DM'd me and asked about the book. The book is okay if you're just starting out and you don't know. I mean, I didn't pay full price for this book. I like to buy like used books because I'm going to save the planet. Um, upcycling books. So I always, I love finding like used book places like when we travel. Like that's my thing. 
Anyways, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna find me a used bookstore to see if I can find the book I said I wanted on Amazon or I'm just gonna order the used one off Amazon, but I typically buy the used versions of books. Uh, it's an okay book. If you can find it in the library, even better. <laughs> so you're not paying any money for it. Yeah. Anyways, there was a little bit of helpful information, but nah, not a lot. And I'm not a rat. Don't give me some human data. Anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing week this week. I hope, I hope you enjoy the sunshine. We're supposed to have sunshine, I think, today. I think today or tomorrow we're supposed to have sunshine. It's supposed to be 60 degrees. I can't wait. I half tan, I tan like the lower half of my legs so I can wear like my cropped pants. Is that what the kids are calling them? I don't know. You know the, the, the pants that are a little bit... <sighs> I'm going to get off here, you guys. But anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing week. If I didn't say it already, if you have any overeating self-help books, let me know. Uh, yeah. I like to read it. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great week and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.